Hello everybody, thank you for rejoining me. Um, what, I'm being, what I've been getting on with is the arch for the top of my gate. So ignore that over there, that's just a side project. So let me bring you in closer and show you, I've already made a start on this, so let me show you how I've got on so far. Right, so if I just lift this up out of the way, you'll be able to see where I started, <coughs> which was with a drawing. So my extreme widths here, this is how wide my door casing is. I've got a centre point and the radius of my semicircle is obviously half that distance. So I began by striking my outer circle, my inner circle. I then established the widths of my timber, which I would need to cover the template of my arch and the angle required to cut and join those three pieces accordingly. So if I bring my timber down, just drop the pin back into the centre point, you'll be able to see how I did that. So then bringing my three pieces of timber down onto my drawing, one, two, three, I can ensure that they cover the picture underneath and that way the arch will definitely be contained within the timber. So I then cut my timbers at the appropriate angle. I have mortised and wedged these to reinforce these joints, glued, clamped it together, let that dry. I've then come in with a sacrificial batten, which again keeps this square, screwed into the bottoms here and at this end and that will enable it all holds together and it will give me again a pivot point in the center from which to anchor it into the jig and spin it as I cut it on the bandsaw. So that's kind of where I'm up to. Next job, bandsaw cutting. Awesome. Right then. That's my bandsaw set up. Could have used a smaller ruler, but didn't have one. Right, so what I've got is I've got my bandsaw set up, ready for depth of cut. I've got this sacrificial, artificial makeshift extension table to support my work. Just in here, I've got my two pivot holes, which will take my radius pin on my workpiece and one is for the outer radius, one for the inside radius. So to start with, I'm going to do the outside radius. So I take my workpiece. You see in here, this is my pivot pin. I'm going to try and drop that. There it goes. And we're basically just going to rotate this through the bandsaw. This is actually my first time trying this technique, so I don't know how long it's going to take. It'll take as long as it takes. I wish me luck. Here we go.
Now then, once I start doing the inside cuts, the inside radius, I'm going to encounter a problem. So you have to stop the bandsaw before you cut all the way through your support batten. So the blade is buried into it, but it hasn't gone through yet. Because as soon as I cut through this, I'm going to lose this reinforcement. So you basically just need to add a support packer behind the blade. And that'll keep your pivot in position. And then we can start the bandsaw up again and carry on. Well, I am dead, dead chuffed with that. Not bad at all. It's even dead square. So that means my jig extension was set up nicely. So yeah, so there's my arch pretty much done. You might have noticed as I cut the inside radius, I uh, must have made a slight error somewhere on the, the position of my inside pin. And I think I've just cut inside my line slightly by an inch. So I readjusted that and that little cut mark there will lose that no problem. So I'm going to get on with sanding back to my lines. I haven't done too bad to be fair. I'm pretty further out in some places than in others, but generally it's about where I wanted it to be. No more anyway. So I don't know how long this will take again, sanding down to my line. Hopefully it won't take too long. So I'll get myself masked up and we'll crack on with
Well, that turned out all right. This is the first time I've ever done anything like this. So this is a, a new one on me. I saw Norm do that spinny bandsaw curve cutting jig thing years ago on the New Yankee Workshop. And it turned out all right. Knows what he's talking about, that dude. But um, as far as the inside goes, I've made this out of individual components. I don't know whether there's an easy way of doing this. This is how I've done it. It's turned out okay. Some very slight gaps in those two. Those three are fine. Everything else is pretty good. So those will get filled and painted over. No problemo. Um, what I'm going to do next is just run a profile around these inside faces. A little bit of beading to go on that inside edge. And that's pretty much done. So I hope you join me next time where I will go through all the sort of the finishing touches and we'll get this thing finished off. Thanks very much for watching. See you again.